Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, may be a pretty bad game, but it is God compared to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That, that game is just the epitome of bad. I mean, I know you played a lot of bad games before, but no, let me tell you, that game is bad. I mean, it's like Castlevania 2, you expect it to be, like, no, it's like, you expect it to be good because it's one of the Castlevania games, it's a sequel, but it's like such a disappointment that it's such a big f***ing piece of sh but Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and a lot of other Nintendo games, there isn't any expectations. There's no disappointments to be had because they're just, you know, rare, obscure games like, you know, Mick Kids or uh, Taxman or whatever, you know. But Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as rare and obscure as it is, you play it once and you're haunted for life. I mean, I'm traumatized after playing it. I can't believe how bad it is. No, I mean, it's bad. Like... That's why I'm coming in front of the camera right now to show you with my own face how f***ing bad it is. I mean, with Simon's Quest, you heard the sincerity in my voice, but now see the sincerity in my eyes. This game is f***ing horrible! It's f***ing horrible! I mean, it's like... Like... Pong is better, and Pong is only like three lines in a ball. Those little tiger, like electronic wrist games, those are better than Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It makes no f***ing sense. It's like, what were they thinking? Like, I seriously can't believe how bad that f***ing game is. It's so bad that I'm not even going to show it to you, because it's just... <sighs> I mean, maybe you need some kind of proof. Maybe I should show you some clips from the game. It's going to be really hard, though. I, I, just, I, I just don't want to play it right now. I really don't want to play it. I don't, I don't even want to look at the f***ing box that encases that piece of that game's f***ing bad. Oh. It's f***ing horrible. Oh. I'm gonna show it to you though. Just to prove how bad it is. But I warn you. Here it goes. Here it is. Here's the piece of game. Who the f spent this much f money on this game? <sighs> this is so not worth the time. Alright, first of all, who are these people trying to kill you? Why do you walk so slow? And the staff doesn't do anything. Look at this. I'm gonna try to kill somebody, and it's not gonna work. See that? It's like, they give you a weapon, and then it doesn't do anything. I mean, imagine if in Zelda, imagine if Link couldn't use his sword. And then look, then you die. And then you turn into Mr. Hyde, I guess. You walk around punching people and throwing shit, and then for no reason you just die. Lightning will strike like it's real spontaneous and you're dead. And then the game's over. What the f is that shit? Okay. You've seen the game. Now that should satisfy all your curiosity. If you are curious enough to play it, just do yourself a favor and don't. I mean, if you're like a hardcore Nintendo fan, as I am, and you have to have every single game in your collection, please do yourself an enormous favor and just stay the f*** away from this awful piece of
I mean, don't even buy it like used for like a penny or whatever. I mean, that shiny gold copper will be worth a fortune someday compared to this awful pile of steaming goat. I mean, don't even download it. Like, no matter how curious you are, just do yourself a favor and never play it because you will be wishing for the rest of your life that you could invent a time machine and go back to the day you play that game and just kill yourself. I mean, if you ever find the game, if you ever see it, smash it. Smash it with a hammer. Smash it till every tiny fragment is like, is so small it's invisible. I mean... You'd rather super glue your ass shut than play that game. You'd rather drown in gasoline. You'd rather, you know, the, the thing is, you think I'm joking, like I'm trying to be funny or something. You know, the fact that that game exists is a horrible abomination of mankind. That game is so f***ing horrible. And I am not kidding. I am dead serious. Dead. Serious. <laughs> this game is Try to help me now, man. Well, let me be honest with you about this one. Oh boy, I hate this game. I mean, it makes me want to kill myself. Now, the only comforting thing to know is that everybody seems to share my frustration. Karate Kid is a game that has haunted many of our childhoods. I mean, everybody has the same story. I love the movie, so I got the Nintendo game, and I couldn't stand it. Yet, I had to keep on playing it because I had to beat it. So, what is it about this game that's drawn so many unfortunate kids to turn into bitter adults, reminiscing on their angry childhood, screaming at the TV, throwing the controllers? I mean, anybody who has beaten this incredibly hard piece of will not have any sense of satisfaction, but rather regrets, because it is a complete waste of time. I mean, it's like coming out of a brutal fight, being the winner, but achieving nothing for all your troubles, but some bloody bruises and broken bones. It's just not worth it. The biggest problem is that the control is so awkward. You have to press up to jump, which doesn't really help because you can only go straight up in the air. He has, yeah, it gotta be like absolutely still. And if you touch an enemy, you fly in the opposite direction. You can't get close enough to really attack anybody. You die in every pit and it's so easy to fall into them. So every time you get hit near a pit, you're basically dead. Level one is ridiculously easy. You just fight one-on-one -on -one and then you kick the shit out of everybody and there you go, you win. You do it again and again. Now level two is where we get to the side-scrolling gameplay. It's almost a rip-off of Kung Fu, but much worse. Every once in a while there's these stupid bonus stages which are next to impossible. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that it would be easier to do this in real life. Now, when you get to level three, there's a typhoon, so the wind keeps pushing you back. And if that's not enough, there's these twigs and birds flying through the air. Every possible projectile hurts you and makes you fly back. And there's pits everywhere. I hate this game, but why am I playing it? Well, that's the question everyone has asked themselves, and they all have the same reason. Because you're angry and you want to win. You want to beat the Nintendo, but the cold fact is that nobody cares but you. Then you get to level four and holy sh is it hard. You can't get near anybody to attack them and they all have these long spears that make you fly back. You can sometimes hit people when you're walking uphill, but when you're going down, you can't really attack low enough to hit them. They're all basically just bullying up on you and they just knock you all around and there's nothing you can do. And guess what? That's the last level. And if you are expecting some big ending to be worth all your trouble, well, you're wrong. The only thing that happens at the end is that Mr. Miyagi winks.
What a piece of I mean, I guess they decided because the game's only four levels long, it better be the hardest four levels ever. Well, how about this? How about if I made a game where there's just this one cliff you have to jump over and it's like nearly impossible, but if you do it, you win the game and that's it. I mean, what the were they thinking with this piece of What the Now, if you're a serious Nintendo collector, do yourself a favor, don't get this game because it's not worth it. I mean, it's made many lives miserable. And, you know, if you see it on sale for a dollar, just stay away. Don't even touch it. I haven't played this one in a while, so let's give it a chance. Alright, well this is really an inconvenience, having to search for stuff. Look at this, you go around and you search for things. Searching. It's empty. It's so slow. Now this is kind of fun though, you get to punch people. We're gonna beat up Roger Rabbit now. Yeah! The only thing that's really annoying is that it takes so long to charge that punch. Oh, You know what? It isn't fun. You know, it just isn't at all. It's just a pain in the f Can you help me? Go away, you horrid man. How about go away, you horrid game? Driving the car is really annoying because the control's so awkward. Then these weasels catch you, and they make you solve riddles, and they're always the stupidest riddles too, like what animal can you never trust? A cheetah. And how is this cat gonna kill you? And look at this. Th this is the longest password ever. Would it have killed them to make this any shorter? It takes forever. Like, why should any game take like 10 minutes to type in the password? So then you go into this nightclub and you find Jessica Rabbit, and then she tells you to go find her phone number, like she can't just give it to you. So you go around and you search every table till you find it, and then, you know, I was looking all over this game, like where is there a phone where you can actually call her? And it wasn't until much later, when I grew up, that I found out you're really supposed to call her. This is Jessica Rabbit. Well, I got your number and I'm calling just to say f you. I hope you're proud of yourself. Yeah, well, I hope you're proud of yourself, and you know what I mean, you I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Yeah, well, wait till I draw your suicide note in your own blood, you bunny I'm coming over, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill your whole family. Alright, well, now that I got that out of my system, let's continue with the game. So you go into the stores, and the way you buy stuff is ridiculous. You go up, and then you have to, like, Go through all your items till you select the wallet. Use the wallet and then this item drops down and you go pick it up. Now there's only one item for sale at a time, so you have to leave the store, then you come back in and then there's something different there. So if you're looking for something in particular, you have to keep leaving the store and coming back in. Like, imagine if in real life, like if I walked into a liquor store and I wanted Rolling Rock and all they had there was Budweiser just sitting on a box next to the counter, so then I have to leave and I have to come back in again and then there's something else and I have to keep walking in and out the door till I get what I want. It's just, like, what were they thinking? So you finally get the dynamite and you come over to blow up this brick wall and watch this, it's probably the best explosion ever. Yeah, look at that. That was pathetic. So then you get to Judge Doom, and he's like, impossible. And most of the things you have are just useless. You have a gun, which really doesn't do anything. You know what? I'm not even gonna punish myself anymore with this piece of Alright, the game sucks. End the story. I wanna nail Roger Rabbit to the cross.
The original Ninja Turtles is one of the most annoying games I've ever played. You first play it and think, well, this can't be too bad, the control's decent, it's fun killing things, the sound effects are cool. You may even think I'm trying to compare it to the sequels, which are far superior. Two-player, arcade action, beat up a bunch of foot soldiers, good stuff. But this first one is garbage. And you may be like, you know, come on, it's the first of its kind, be easy on it. But no, it sucks. It sucks ass from a straw. And you want to know why? Well, where do I begin? That beeping sound when you're low on energy? I mean, that's so annoying. Now look at that. Now, how the hell am I supposed to get up there? That's impossible. And who is that guy with the chainsaw anyway? Remember him from Ninja Turtles? I sure don't. The only way I can get up there is with Donatello, the turtle with the longest weapon. I uh, come on, get over here, you nut. Alright. Okay, all of that just for a pizza? Pizza Okay, here's a trick I think everybody knows. When you're fighting Rocksteady, you jump up onto these crates with Donatello, and you just keep hitting him with your bow. Now, what's really weird is the timing. I mean, you have to hit him when he's sort of ducking, not when he's standing up. I guess that would make too much sense. So it's obviously a game flaw. Then there's that level where you have to save the dam. April O'Neil says, you have my support. Okay. What the hell did she ever do for you? Stupid banana raincoat wearing So you have to swim around and deactivate all these bombs. And there's so many things out there to kill you and you have a time limit. So naturally, you're rushing to make it through as fast as you can. And all these electric plants hurt you, so you need a lot of patience. But how could you have patience when you're in a f***ing hurry? F Level 3 is like a maze. You're in the turtle van going around, and there's steamrollers coming at you from everywhere. And you know what I always thought was really weird? Why does the turtle van have the same energy bar as the turtle that you have selected? Like, shouldn't it have its own since it's like a vehicle and not, you know, the turtle? Never mind. So here's a pop quiz. Who are the target audience for this game? Kids. Kids who were fans of Ninja Turtles. Now, you think they would have actually have put more Ninja Turtle characters in the game? Like, uh, Baxter Stockman, the Rat King, Krang? I mean, it's not like Krang was like a minor character that came in the fifth season of the show. Krang was right there from the beginning. So, like, there was no excuse. There was no excuse not to have him there. I mean, instead, make way for uh, the missile balloons, flying robot head, those little butterfly things, Mr. Fireman. And why don't you hear the Ninja Turtles theme song anywhere in the game? What a piece of You know what I hate? The jumps in the sewer. If your accuracy is slightly off, you're going down. So you really got to take your time and watch what's coming up. Oh, you son of a f And you know what pisses me off? They're turtles for f sakes. They can't even swim. And look at this right here. These spike walls come at you like an Indiana Jones booby trap. And some game designer who's laughing their ass off just decided to put a pizza down there. Okay, well, what's the point? I mean, are you gonna be suicidal enough to go and try to get that pizza? I mean, who's gonna do that? It's impossible. What a joke. And speaking of hard to reach pizzas, look at this. Come on. Oh, you brat. This is just a bunch of cockadoochie. This is bull. Jesus Christ Almighty. Holy Oh my god. Oh man. Why is this game so hard? It's for kids. Have mercy. And why does this jump have to be so close to the ceiling? This game. And you know what pisses me off? 
Every time you fall down, you have to walk through the entire room all over again. All the enemies come back, so you have to fight everybody all over again. Now, if you get the pizza, the pizza doesn't come back. Only the bad guys. What a load of I mean, you can't even develop a strategy because the enemies keep changing. It's completely random. I can't get over this jump. If only those two extra platforms weren't there, it wouldn't be a problem. God. Can I get up? Can I get up? No. Get the f up there. Get up there. Whoa, dude, this game's like a total bummer. What a joke. Well, you can just walk over it? You can just walk over it. You are scum. Cowabunga. Cow piece of dog. This game is diarrhea coming out of my. This game is as appealing as a news infested, dirty sewer rat. I've had more fun playing with dog turds. Shredders my and splinters my. This game is an inside out regurgitating putrid fecal matter. I'd rather. Can yank all the hairs out of my I'd rather drink diarrhea vomited out of a buffalo's It sucking it sucks, it blows, it's a piece of and I don't like it. <sighs> this game is so bad, I really don't want to play it. But Darth Vader came from the planet Vulcan and said that he'll melt my brains if I don't, so I don't have a choice. The first thing I really admire is how well it followed the movie. And you gotta love that music. Sounds just like the movie, right? And that's it. It just loops over and over again. And you're not gonna believe it, but that's all you hear the entire game. Yep, from the title screen all the way to the end, the same music. I'd rather have a Buffalo take a diarrhea dump in my ear, then subject them to this horrendous garbage. Now about the gameplay. Well, you're racing against the time limit, and you have to collect clocks to get more time. So that's pretty creative, isn't it? So you're walking through Hill Valley, and every single thing you can imagine is out to kill you. Bullies, hula hoop girls, killer bees, and guys holding glass windows, just like in the movie. What happened here? Is this Hill Valley or is it I never knew a hula hoop girl could be so deadly. Why does she want to kill Marty anyway? Not to mention it doesn't even look like Marty. Look at that black helmet head. Also, when did he ever wear that sleeveless black shirt? Oh look, I got a bowling ball. Remember that in the movie? Remember when Marty goes around throwing bowling balls at people? Whose idea was this? What were they thinking? Ah, the skateboard. Now that makes a lot more sense. But it's the most annoying thing in the game. Yeah, it makes you go faster, but you can't stop. You crash into everything, and it makes it a whole hell of a lot harder. Jumping is useless. Try jumping over the bench, you'll never make it. So what's the point of having a jump button if it doesn't help at all? What are those guys doing with that window anyway? And why are those giant bees always coming out? Give me a break. And what the f*** is Marty doing when he gets killed? It looks like he's having some kind of seizure. I mean, I guess I'd have a seizure too if there were bees and hula hoop girls and all this weird s*** coming at me. I mean, just leave me alone. I'm trying to collect clocks. I never got too far in this game, but after the walking stages are over, you go to the cafe which by this time is a breath of fresh air to see something different and get a break from that horrible music. So you move up and down behind this counter throwing milkshakes at people and if any of them touch the counter, you're done for. You think it would be easy to hit them, but it's not. Common sense would say if you stand in front of someone and throw something, it would hit them. You can't tell where to stand. Now if you actually have the patience to get through the cafe stage, guess what's next? More walking. You know what's the worst thing about this game? 
is that it bears the name Back to the Future, a movie well worth putting more time and effort into making a decent game. And the movie came out in 85, the game 89. There's no excuse. No f excuse. Just suddenly orders are passed. Quick, make a game, name it after a big movie, and then just spit it in all the stores for all the kids to buy for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 50 bucks. There's no internet to look up reviews back then. It was just, you know, you buy a game and you hope for the best. And with Back to the Future, how could you go wrong? Oh yeah, you can go wrong, all right. Like if I just into a bag and wrote Back to the Future on it, that would be the same as this awful piece of It brings my piss to a boil. What a piece of I'll never play it again either. It's my last time. I'd rather eat out the rotten of a roadkill skunk than play this game ever again. And I'm dead serious too. And you know what's worse? You know what's, <laughs> what's really worse? Guess what? There's a sequel! Yes, it's true. Back to the Future 2 and 3. Two sh games for the price of one. Let's check it out. Holy shit. Look, the DeLorean. Now, I remember that from the movie. Not so much the piranhas, the snails, the weird face, the running frog, the bouncy thing, the thing in the sewer that comes out and kills Marty, the little dinosaurs, the cloud that drops pellets, and the whatever the that is. And look at those. What are they? Goombas and the spiky thing ripped right off of Super Mario Brothers? Slackers. And every time you die, the DeLorean drops you off, and it seems like it always takes you in the opposite direction of what you're trying to go. Soup. Oh god, don't let the blue bird get you. Get the key, get the key! Yeah, the hoverboard. Cool, a bonus stage. Wow. This. I wish I could go back in time to prevent this game from being made. Unfortunately, I need to build a flux capacitor and I also need some plutonium to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity, so it's out of the question. So, let's end on a positive note. There's got to be one good thing about this game, and I know what it is. It fits in a toaster. It's gonna take you back to the past To play the games that suck he'd rather have Mick Kids is nothing more than an advertising vehicle, much like games such as Yo Noid and 7-Eleven Spot. Now some people out there may actually like this game, and to be fair, it isn't one of the worst games in the NES library. There are definitely much crappier games such as Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout and Silver Surfer, for example. So anyway, let's check out Mick Kids. So there's Ronald with his magic bag, bag of hallucinogenic drugs. I always thought that clown was one scary The Hamburglar stole his bag, apparently. Alright, this is the first level. Now, does it look familiar? So where have I seen this before? Jumping around, collecting M's? Oh, like coins. And Mario Brothers? Like, yeah, that's where I've seen this. It's just like Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's check it out. I mean, the map looks similar. Same idea. The stages are designed the same. Jumping on enemies, I mean... Everything looks the same. Mario's controls were a lot better, though. Well, pretty much everything is better. So back to McKids. 
You know, I changed my mind. It actually is pretty original. I mean, walking upside down, I mean, that's pretty creative. Whoa, it makes me feel sick. They must have been on crack when they came up with this game. So you go around collecting cards that you need to beat the level. So, there you go, in the Ronald's Magic Zipper, running around through Magic McDonald world. God, that really makes me nauseous. And don't try to kill anything with those blocks, that it really doesn't work too well. Collect some more useless M's that don't do anything. Alright, here's a bonus game. You jump on these arrows that make you go up. And you gotta jump on the white ones until you get to the top, and then when you get to the top, you go into another zipper, and you collect some one-ups, which aren't really that important, because there's a part where you can get a whole bunch of them. Then you go to birdie stage. Stupid feathered bird. <laughs> Cute smiley face. You know what's a big problem with this game? I mean, you never know what's below you. You just fall and die. Balls. This game's so bad, they actually invented a way to end it by pushing start and select at the same time. So you get this block which makes you heavier so you can jump higher, well, lower really, and now you have another one-up that you don't need, so that's just a waste of time. Oh, and look, I died anyway, so what a waste. Oh god, look, a McFlurry man! Those guys are bad. So how do I get that card? Oh, every kid knows how to do this. Just get the secret passageway under the clouds. Yeah, that's easy to figure out. Kids will have the patience to figure that out. Because, you know, kids have a lot of patience. Especially the ones with ADD, such as myself. Then you go to Grimace's board. Here's Grimace, the big purple Look at his house. It looks like Barney the Dinosaur's testicle. Okay, so here's the part where you can get a billion one-ups. So you just get two one-ups here, and then you go back into the board again. You die here, but you always get one extra, so if you have an hour to waste, then there you go. <laughs> have fun. You're completely wasting your time anyway if you're playing this game, as I am, let alone make a f video about it. And some people like to call one-ups extra guys or free mans. I like to call them life insurance. Look how bad the jumps are. Look at this. What a load of all I want to do is get down to that barrel, but it's such a pain in the I mean, It keeps bouncing me back up. Farts. It never ends with this game. It's just like an infinite turd coming out of my just like an endless rope. I mean, when the is it going to be over? I can't stand this Watch the moose. Grab a block and try to kill him. Unfortunately, it just bounces and misses him. Now look at this. Would you ever guess that you're supposed to jump off this cliff? And this really reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3 again. And also, why is this guy walking on water? Who does he think he is? Jesus Christ? Then you gotta talk to the professor, another one of Ronald's stoner friends. And he tells you to get more cards, which makes me just want to punch him. Even worse, you gotta go to the moon, where you meet Cosmic. Now who the f*** is Cosmic? Did they run out of McDonald's characters? What about Captain Crook or Big Mac? No, Cosmic. I never heard of him. I guess there's nothing more you can expect but a character like that. I mean, I bet the people who designed this game were paid minimum wage. So anyway, you're on the moon, so you're floating around, and then there's these tentacles that come out and kill you wherever you go. And you really gotta bust your balls to find all those cards. Like there's this one that's high up in the air, and even when you get it, you jump back down and something kills you and you gotta start the whole level all over again. Balls. So here you are at the last stage, Robble Robble. You gotta get the cards from Hamburglar. So you gotta get across the lava by throwing these blocks in it while all this stuff is shooting at you. So look at this. This is some kind of track you have to move on, but you can't because the controls are so hard. So do you hit A or B? I don't know. I have no idea how to control this. You'd think you can just hold the A button or something, but no, of course not. That would be too simple. They have to make it like you do these little taps with the button to make it move. I mean, the controls just suck. What a piece of 
A little kid could never figure this out. So finally, when you get through all these crazy obstacles, you get up here, you walk all the way to this lava pit, and you don't have any blocks to float over it. You can't go around it, so what do you do? Guess you just gotta commit suicide. Toasty! Wally Bear and the No Gang. Now the first thing that baffles me about this game is the actual cartridge. I mean, look at this. It doesn't look like any other NES game. And what's this button for? Press here? Seriously? Press here? What for? I mean, is it supposed to be telling you how to push the game down? Like how to put the game into the system? Well, I, I can't really push on it when it's inside the Nintendo. You know, do they really think kids are that stupid? I mean, it should just say, press here, you dumb f Like some kid's gonna be like, uh, duh, how do I put the game in? So anyway, we start off with the title screen of a deformed bear with sunglasses riding a skateboard. A stereotypical anti-drug corporate waste of imagination. You can choose between one and two players, if you're lucky enough to have a friend who would actually play this piece of with you. Okay, here's the plot. You're the ultra-hip skateboard and schmuck Wally Bear. Your Uncle Gary Grizzly wants you to gather up your straight-edge friends and head over to his house for a party. Wally must reach his uncle's house before dark, or at least before the timer runs out, for he loses all his lives. But every bird and attack dog on the block wants you dead, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that besides just jump for your life. You can get items like pizzas, frisbees, or hubcaps to throw at enemies. And you can't really hit birds because they just dart across the screen. Now why would a bird want to kill a skateboarding bear anyway? The levels are just incredibly repetitive. Like literally, the same backgrounds are used over and over again, kind of like in a Flintstones cartoon. If you notice during a driving scene, it's just the same stuff in the background being repeated over and over again. The only difference is that the Flintstones was entertaining, but this, this is just a piece of There's also this named Ricky the Rat who's trying to knock you off your skateboard and turn you into a heroin junkie. You also have to prevent a poodle from getting her radio stolen, stop a lizard from drunk driving, and deal with other things that either want you to die or want you to snort crack up your bear snout. The music in this game just sucks. I mean, no bad game is complete without some auditory that makes you want to puke. You'd rather listen to your only infant child choking to death. So, just turn down the volume, and while you're at it, just turn off the game. Back in the 80s, it seemed like there were all these characters trying to keep kids off of drugs. Whether it was Mick Gruff, or Pee Wee, or the combined efforts of Alf, Michelangelo, Bugs Bunny, and Miss Piggy. And this game, I'm sure it didn't help kids stay off drugs at all. In fact, I'm sure the people who made it were on something. So, avoid it at all costs, unless you are f***ed up on drugs. So in that case, let's say no to drugs, and let's say no to this game. It has just come to my attention that there is a Wally Bear hotline, 1-800-HIGH-WALLY. Now, you wouldn't think that after like 20 years that number would still be functional, but somewhere in some old dusty basement, Wally Bear still lives. that. It's creeping me out. It's like listening to a ghost. <gasps> it's 
It's gonna take you back to the past To play the games that suck He'd rather have A buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat The rotten Of a roadkill skunk And down it with beer He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard Alright, this time we have a guest reviewer, and I don't know, this might be kind of weird, but... Hey! Come here! No, not there! Pickle. Hey, tell them... Pickle. Tell them your name. Pickle. Yeah, this is... Pickle. Pickle. And... Pickle. Pickle's... Pickle. Pickle's gonna... Pickle. Comment on this game. It's kind of a Pickle. weird one, and uh... Hey, Pickle, you like video games? Pickle, 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 Pickle. You like Nintendo? Pickle, 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 pickle. You ever play this game Master Chew and the Drunkard Who? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a weird game, and you can just tell just by the cartridge. And it's one of those weird baby blue cartridges, so you can tell right off the bat that it's a big piece of Pickle. Pickle. Pickle, pickle, pickle. pickle. The story involves the legendary Siamese twin Shiva from Hindu religion. She has filled the world with evil spirits. Your best friend, Master Pickle. Hugh, has failed to stop them, and he's resorted to drinking. So now he's a drunk. Pickle, 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 pickle. However, Master Chu has not given up hope. It's up to him to put an end to the evil. Pickle. Sounds pretty sh What do you say, Pickle? Pickle. Yeah. Really, only one reason to buy this game, and that's to be able to say, "I own Master Chu and the Drunkard Who," so people can awkwardly stare at you. Your objective each round is to locate all the yin and yang symbols in order to fight the boss. You can shoot energy out of your hand, and you can upgrade to two shots of energy at the same time. You want to try pickle? Pickle, 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 pickle. 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 So, what do you think? Exactly. Instead of pressing A or B to jump, like in most games, you have to press up. Sort of like in the Karate Kid. Maybe the control's so Pickle. shitty because the programmers were trying to make Chu seem drunk. Or, they were drunk themselves. Pickle. There's endless waves of spiders, snakes, and other unnameable things that come after you. Pickle. 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 What are you talking about? The graphics? Pickle. Oh yeah, absolutely. Pickle. 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 The best effect in this game is that when standing still, Chu's clothes wave around in the wind. Now let's talk about the sound. It sucks. The same for every stage, just stereotypical Chinese music playing over and over in a loop. So after you beat the first level, the rest of the game is just the same repetitive thing over and over again. I mean, it's more fun taking a Each board you collect eight yin and yang symbols, you fight the boss, and then you get the key. And by the way, the key in this game is called the Flaming Key of Freedom. Flaming, huh? Kind of like the Flame Whip in Simon's Quest. The boss fights aren't even challenging because all you have to do is stand on the platform until they turn their back, then you drop down, land a few hits, and then you repeat. For the last boss in the game, Shiva, I was expecting something a little better. I don't know why, but all you get is this weird statue. And why the f is it green? I mean, could they have picked another putrid color but green? Go. So after you beat the boss, you get to see the best ending in video game history. What a piece of pickle. It's gonna take you back to the past to play the games that suck. He'd rather have a buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat the rotten Of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard He's the angry Nintendo nerd He's the angry Nintendo nerd
Top Gun sort of marks the beginning of a genre. It was one of the first flight simulation games for the Nintendo Entertainment System, or at least one of the most commonly referred to. We obviously know that it ain't got compared with games today, and for that reason you might think it's not worth complaining about. But no, it sucks now, and it sucked back then. Check it out. Mission 1 is training for the next mission. Okay, sounds simple enough. So you get a choice of missiles. So would you rather have more or less? What kind of choice is that? Pick more. I mean, the idea is that the fewer missiles is more powerful, but guess what? Whenever you shoot an enemy plane, all it takes is one shot to blow them up. Even your regular machine gun bullets take them down in one shot, so what's the point? And I love all the useless information on the control board. Altitude, speed, I mean really, what does it matter? And look at all the gauges on the right just for decoration. The first thing that really sucks about the gameplay is just the fact that it's boring. 90% of the time you're just flying into a blank sky as little pieces of cotton come flying at you. And yes, I know they're supposed to be clouds. Also, notice the absence of music. I know the developers were trying to make something new to make it realistic, but what we get is a game that makes you feel like you're in this blank, mindless void. Like, if purgatory exists, this is what it is. Top Gun for the NES. I'd rather fly a cargo plane full of rubber dog out of Hong Kong. Uh-oh, I'm really now. I gotta land on an aircraft carrier. A feat that's impossible. Your radar monitor gives you instructions on how to land, but no matter what you do, you still crash. You know, it's like every time I get to this part, I think I might have a chance. This is gonna be it. Finally gonna land the plane. Speed down, left, left, speed up, right, right, speed up, speed down, left, left, speed up, speed down, up, up. Up, up, I'm hitting up. It's impossible. I mean, why is it so hard? I mean, I guess because they were trying to make it realistic, like if you were actually trying to land on a real aircraft carrier, but I highly doubt that any of this game is like really flying a plane. So even though I crashed, it only takes a life away and it still lets me continue to the next level. Mission two, destroy an enemy aircraft carrier. All right, fine. As long as I don't have to land on it, now the only difference with the second level is that you're below the clouds and you can now see the water. Basically it's just a darker color blue than the sky. <laughs> but stay the f away, there's battleships that shoot the shit out of you. You're best off just flying into the sky the whole time. Now halfway through this level your fuel starts to run out, so this refueling plane comes and then you have to control its nozzle. So just like landing the plane, this is impossible and I've never once done it. You just have to be lucky. I mean, your accuracy has to be 100% perfect. And really, I don't have a clue how it works. Down, down, speed up, down, down, left, left, up, up, speed up, left, left, down, down, up, up, and left, left, right, right, up, 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 left, left, down, down, up, up. What the f What was I supposed to do? Now, now look at the plane. It just goes away like f him. I mean, they just leave you out here to die. At this point, it should just say, game over, but instead, it allows you to play for a little longer, which is pointless. You're done for. The refueling plane doesn't come back, and within minutes, your fuel runs out and you finally lose. And that's as far as I ever got. What a load of This game chews turds. This game sucks your balls off and spits them up your ass. Now, I know there's only four levels in the game, so it's kind of the same deal as Karate Kid. It's a short game, but it's as hard as a T-Rex is Now, because I've never passed that refueling plane, I've never seen the last two levels. So, what I've decided to do here is to create my own version of what I think the last two levels may be like. Mission three, blow up. Mission four, vent your anger and destroy the TV. just haven't had enough fun torturing yourself with this awful game and you still want some more well guess what you're in luck there's a sequel
Top Gun the second mission, which doesn't really make much sense because it sounds like you're talking about the second mission in the first Top Gun. So, whatever. I mean, wouldn't this be mission 5 and up? Even the tops of the game cartridges look completely identical. Top Gun and Top Gun. If you have a microscope, you might be able to read the second mission under there. Now, to tell you the truth, the second Top Gun isn't as bad as the original, but it sure is a, a lot harder if you could actually believe that. The gameplay is a lot faster. You can fly upside down and spin around, although I don't really know what the point of that is. And there's also not as many dead spots where you're just waiting for something to happen and looking for enemies. Here, your enemies come after you right away and they just blow you out of the sky, so you have to really think fast. The missiles are really hard to dodge and just like the first time, one missile is enough to kill you. But this time, they're even worse because they're faster and they don't seem to come anywhere near as close as they did before. In the original Top Gun, when a missile hits you, it looks like this. And in the sequel, it looks like this, much farther away. So if you played the original first, you're going to be really disoriented that you have so much less time to get out of the way. Besides, they still look like bowling balls on fire. I never made it past the first stage, but that's also because I don't have the patience for this crap. Now adding to this game, there's a versus mode. The one player game where you battle the computer is impossible. Your opponent just disappears right away. He flies right behind you and just blasts your ass to oblivion. And the two player game is what it is. It's just two players shoot each other up. And the one thing I find really disappointing is that after you blow up your opponent, you see him escape in a parachute. And you don't want that to happen. You want to see him die. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this garbage. F balls. It's gonna take you back to the past To play the games that suck He'd rather have A buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat The rotten Of a roadkill skunk and down it with He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard He's the angry Nintendo nerd He's the angry Nintendo nerd Ooh, I know what you're thinking. How dare you pick on Double Dragon? But I'm not. Double Dragon's awesome! And so is Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. But Double Dragon 3, The Sacred Stones, is just a waste. First of all, those talking parts really slow the game down. I mean, why not just shut the up and let me fight? Now, the big problem I have with this game is just that it's too hard. All you get is one life. One life. If you die once, you start all over again. Now I can get through the first two Double Dragons without dying a single time until maybe the last levels, but this one, I can't even get through the first level. Everybody gangs up on you and they just drain your energy. And yes, even your energy bar goes down faster than in the previous games. I guess they were trying to make this one realistic, like if in real life, if you went out onto the streets to fight this many people at the same time, you'd get your ass handed to you. And when you die once, that's it. You're brown bread. You're not coming back. You can't around with this game. Never, ever go in between anybody. Try to keep your enemies on one side and keep using that spin kick. When they're all over you, it's your only attack worth using. But sometimes the kick won't work. Yes, I swear it's true. I know how to do the spin kick. I can get it to work most any given time. But when I'm desperately trying to get my enemies off me, it just doesn't happen. I mean, what the f is that about? F this game. Your only chance to see beyond the first level is to either be a double dragon god or to use two players. But whatever you do, don't pick game B because that's where you can hit each other and that makes it pointless if you want to get far. Now, just like the one-player game, it starts off with the story sequence, but this time it shows both the Double Dragons, Billy and Jimmy Lee. Or wait, Bimmy and Jimmy? How'd they make a mistake like this? Bimmy isn't even a real name. How did this happen? They didn't even proofread the game before they released it? Bimmy and Jimmy? I'm sorry, I just can't get over that. Bimmy and Jimmy. 
there's a typo in a Nintendo game, let alone a double dragon game, and it's the first screen. Well, anyway, using two players is much easier, but it's still a hard game. There's so many enemies on the screen, and sometimes it just gets ridiculous. And all the characters start to blink, making it hard to see what you're doing. And obviously, this is an old video game flaw, and it's common when there's so much on the screen. So even though you never get another life, the game designers at least had the courtesy to refill your energy after you beat a level. And along the way, you meet other characters that you can play as. So when you die, you can still use this other character. So it's kind of like finally having another life, except that he sucks. This man in a business suit who does belly flops, he's completely useless. He's so slow. I have no chance against this ninja. What a piece of Well, Friday the 13th on Nintendo. What can you say? The knife going into the eye in the beginning right away should be an indication of how cool it is. This game is infamous for being great, right? I mean, everybody loves this game because it's awesome. I mean, the concept is just brilliant. Adapting a series of R-rated slasher movies for all the kiddies to play? Great idea. There's six camp counselors you can play as, whether they're characters from the movie or not. I don't care because it's a good game. Going around throwing rocks at zombies, collecting lighters, running around trying to find fireplaces to light. What more could you ask for? Oh, and every great game has a map screen, and being that the game is mostly side-scrolling, you can't tell which direction you're supposed to be going. But, but that's cool. It's cool. It makes it more challenging. I like that. Like when you're walking left, but you're really heading to the right on the map. I love figuring that out. I love it. It's just great. Like, puke up a donkey's What a load of bull I mean, I'd rather eat snot and diarrhea vomited out of a buffalo's And if you thought I was serious about this game, I was absolutely right. That's, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I swear. I swear to God, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. It's not a load of It's not a load of Love this game. Love the way the stones keep missing the zombies because they go in this nice arc that flies over them. Fantastic. Gotta get the knife. It's mandatory. Hear that sound? That's the Jason alarm. When you hear that, you have to switch to the map screen and see which cabin's blinking. See right there? That's where I am. And over there, that blinking cabin way over there, that's where I'm supposed to go to fight Jason. And I have a time limit, so I need to get all the way over there as fast as I can, or else Jason kills one of the camp counselors. So, which way do I walk? I guess left, because it's left on the map. Sounds self-explanatory. So, here I am, just following the yellow brick road. Oh, f Look at the map. I've just been walking in the wrong f direction. What a wonderful game. The bare basics of left and right do not apply. And that's why this game is so great, because it's free from all logic. Logic is for pussies. So, I finally get to the cabin, I walk in, and the mannequin counselor says, Thank you. Thanks for walking into the cabin? I didn't fight Jason yet, but you're welcome. He's around somewhere. Oh yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Whoa! Well, he scared the shit out of me, and now he's fighting me like in Mike Tyson's punch out. So I beat him, but he'll be back many times. Just like in the movies. Even after they called part four the final chapter, and then they went on to make it all the way up to number 10, known as Jason X, where he's in outer space. But that's another story. So for now, I go back to walking around and looking for cabins with fireplaces. 
I mean, wasn't this a great idea? Isn't this fun? Like going 3D for the cabin parks? I love how smooth the camera angles are. The overall design, the AstroTurf floors, just ingenious. And the control's so fluent, you just might have to tap the D-pad twice to get it to move. Isn't this fun? I just love trying to find the door because there's nothing in here and now I just want to get the f out. Just want to get the f out. it sucks. So I'm walking around, looking for fireplaces, answering to the Jason alarm every once in a while. And along the way, I continue to collect lighters, keys, weird bottles, and because that rock is as useless as a wad of paper, upgrading to the knife is essential. I go into a cabin and right away there's another mannequin camp counselor. I love how they have no face, it's real creative. I love all those options on the right, most of which could be condensed into just the simple use of the A button, but this game just overcomplicates things because it's so good. So let's try change. Alright, we switch camp counselors. So now my character's slower, I don't have any of my items anymore, and I'm back to using the rock again. That really accomplished a lot. The day to night transitions are nice and smooth. I mean, seriously, it's a big improvement over Simon's Quest, where a box appears and it interrupts the gameplay. No need for it, but Friday the 13th doesn't have that problem, proving that day to night transitions can work when done right. Jason comes out every once in a while to scare the out of you, and he looks really good in purple, doesn't he? That's a good color for him. Knowing that Jason couldn't have been the only enemy in the game, it's interesting to see the use of zombies, birds, and even wolves to add to the mix. Even Jason's mom makes an appearance. And you know what she reminds me of? Those annoying medusas from Simon's Quest. Or wait, I'm talking about Castlevania 3. What, I hate that game too? Well anyway, let's get back to Friday the 13th. So, I'm dead. So once all six of your camp counselors are gone, the game's over. That's ingenious. That's the best game over screen I ever saw. For real, I'm actually being dead serious. Dead serious. That's brilliant, right? You and your friends are dead. Game over. It's priceless. Like, I can't believe it. Isn't that a mean thing to say to kids? Nobody ever dies in Nintendo. They're either defeated or they turn into an item and like float away. But here comes a game like Friday the 13th that just cuts the bullshit, shows some balls, comes flat out and says, you're dead. And your friends too. Beautiful. And what if there was a sequel? It would have to say something even worse. Like I got it. I got a good idea what it should say. It should say, you're dead. Your friends are dead, your family's dead, your pets are being skinned alive, your mom's a you suck at life, the whole world hates you, you're going to live with it. Game over. So, that's it.
I don't know what else to say. The music? Just listen. It's great. And even better, it loops over and over so you get to hear the same thing constantly. Just wonderful. I love those scary faceless kids in the cabin. Makes me have nightmares. As if the map screen isn't confusing enough, when you go into the cave or the woods, you have no idea where you are. When you stand on a path, you press up and then the screen changes. You have no idea where you are because the graphics are so repetitive. Every screen looks the same. I can't tell where I am or where I'm going with this and the cabins just horrible. I can't find the fireplaces. I get lost once I'm inside. I can't even just simply turn around and see the door. The control's so awkward. I'd rather play Doom on Atari. I'd rather play Halo on a Tiger Electronic Risk game. I'd rather drown in diarrhea. I'd rather eat my balls off and puke them up my I'd rather piss a cactus out of my The music is worse than life itself and I turn the volume down except for the fact that I have to hear the Jason alarm. It's all just a test of patience and it can kiss my You're easier to beat in real life than you are in that game, you no good piece of This game is horrible! Nintendo? Uh-huh. You like to play games? No. Oh, you nerd. You wanna play some Dr. Jekyll no. and Mr. Hyde? No. No. Or you wanna play my game? Ha ha ha! This game's horrible. This game is my nightmare. It's a frustrating, incoherent pile of vomited Even the first screen is kind of weird because it shows Freddy without his glove, but his knives are still coming out of the fingers. Now, I think I might actually have an explanation for this. In the movie, Nightmare Part 2, nah, they just f***ed up. So you play as some dude who has some serious balls because he punches snakes right in the face. And you don't have to anyway, you just jump over them all. So this guy has the worst luck ever because rocks randomly fall out of the sky and flocks of vampire bats come after him. Even though it may appear to be a typical side scroller, it isn't at all. There's nothing self-explanatory or even fun about this diarrhea mess. I can't figure out where I'm supposed to go. Some of the doors are closed and some of them are open, but it hardly seems to matter because usually there's only one on the entire street that you can go inside. Whether it's open or shut, it seems completely random. Ha! Figure that out! So you go inside one of the houses and guess what? It's crawling with ginormous spiders. So what do you do? You give them a taste of your fist. Punch him! Uh, uh, smack him around! <laughs> spiders! <laughs> Eat my ass, you <laughs> Show me you're a man! Punch those spiders! Spiders! Punch them! Snakes! You want some too? So I get to this little square door on the floor and I can't go down. The arrow says down, which probably means that's where I'm supposed to go, but I can't. It's not till later I find out 
I'm supposed to collect all the bones in this room first. When I first started playing this, I had no clue what they were for. But now I realize you have to get the bones because that's the point of the game. And if you can't find every single last one of them, you can't leave the room. And some of them are practically invisible. They blend in with the background because the graphics just suck. Oh yeah! Play that game! The plot of this game is that you're trying to collect all of Freddy's bones so you can destroy them in a furnace. Confused? Well, Freddy's dead, and now his bones are somehow scattered all around every house on Elm Street. Meanwhile, Freddy's entering your dreams, just like in the movies, and he can only be stopped when his final remains no longer exist. Freddy's got a lot of bones, and they all look exactly the same. Classic cartoon dog bone. You know, come to think of it, the plot's kind of like Simon's Quest. Why would Simon want to go around collecting pieces of Dracula? He was killed the first time, just leave him alone. Imagine if Batman killed the Joker and then he scattered his pieces all over the city and then went around collecting them all. What a bunch of In fact, the gameplay in Nightmare on Elm Street itself is a lot like Simon's Quest. It has that strange presence to it, where you slip in and out of day to night. In this case, it's a dream world and a awake world. It's got that non-linear quality to it, where you're always confused, trying to figure out where the f to go. Ah, taste the major suckage, you f nerd! So at the end of each house, some weird incarnation of Freddy appears. In this part, it's Freddy's hand on a bunch of balls. What were they thinking? So, you go around looking for another house you can go in, and none of them let me in. Try the cemetery? Nope, can't go there. What's with the zombies? They look like Frankenstein monsters walking with their arms stretched out. Like, how f***ing stereotypical is that? Can I go in the junkyard? Nope. Just keep walking around. Walking down. I guess it's Elm Street, which happens to be the longest f***ing street in the world. Oh look, I finally found a house I can go in. The one with the door that's shut. That makes sense, right? What the f*** are these? Lollipop ghosts with stick arms? Were the enemies in this game designed by some kindergarten kid for Halloween? I'm surprised they don't have skeletons, too. They actually do have skeletons. What the f***? Could the villains be any more stock? Like, we had this creepy game about Freddy. What kind of creepy characters could we add? Well, how about bats, ghosts, spiders, skeletons, and Frankensteins for the kitties? Could it be any more uncreative than that? Like, why don't they just add some witches, black cats, and flying jack-o'-lanterns? They should have just called the game Boo! Haunted House, which is probably what they originally had in mind until they thought, no, wait, make it about Freddy. We already ruined Friday the 13th. Now let's do the same thing in Nightmare on Elm Street. And that's right, it's by the same company. We're not gonna say who it is, but it stands for Laughing Joking Numbnuts. Also, listen to the music. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? In fact, it sounds kinda like it's recycled from Who the F*** Frame Roger Rabbit, another piece of garbage they made. What were they thinking? You love it, you know you do. So let me explain how the dream world thing works. You have a sleep meter that goes down. If you're standing still, it goes down. If you get hit, it goes down. And in time, it goes down by itself. So anything you do or don't do, the sleep meter goes down. Ain't that a And once it's down all the way, you go to sleep. Unless you didn't already fall asleep playing this game. So when you're in the dream world, all the enemies are stronger. Which doesn't even matter anyway, because you can turn into this other character that throws javelins and does the spinning jump. There's also other dream characters you can play as after you collect the dream tokens. Just like in the movie, Nightmare Part 3. Except for the dream tokens part. So if you play in the dream world for a lengthy period of time, the Freddy music starts playing. Then, oh god, is Freddy coming? He sure is. Of all the things in this game, this screen is so cheesy that it's just awesome. But it's ruined by the trademark symbol. Anyway, you fight Freddy, which turns out to be real disappointing. It's just a simple flat room and he walks back and 
board, swatting at the air like he's blind. Come on, Freddy. To get out of the dream world, you have to get the radio to wake yourself up. Then you have to wait for it to change back to the awake world. It's annoying like in Simon's Quest, but in Simon's Quest it's way worse because it's against your own will, it happens so often, and you don't expect it. In Nightmare on Elm Street, at least you're doing it on purpose and you get that rockin' tune rather than just dead silence. But now, I'm using my fists again. Give me the javelin back. I want to go back to sleep. You actually have weapons in the dream world, so what's the point? You know what's really weird? That this game was actually capable of a four-player mode using an accessory that allowed four controllers to be connected to your Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I can't imagine having four people playing this game. Who's going to want to play this piece of shit? I'm lucky if I can get one other person. I have a better chance of cloning myself. So fun. This like Horrible. Thing. Balls. What a piece what of, a of shit. Shit. Hey, wait. Wait. I just cloned myself. I'm in a dream. I can do whatever I want. So why don't we all just stop playing this game? Yeah. So the with that shit. Yeah. The with that The with that The with that, the with that Relax. Now what should we do with the cartridge? How about smash it with the hammer? Nah, that's not good enough. I know, let's drop it out the window. Now come on, be creative. I say we take a shit on it. Good, do it. Empty your shit all over it. I don't gotta take a shit though, you take a shit. You gotta take a shit. Who's gotta take a shit? I gotta take a shit. Then take that shit. Bombs away! <laughs> oh, oh, you diarrhea fiend! Whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, come on, it's not that bad. Front door, closet, front door, closet. Buffalo diarrhea farts. You see, nerd, nobody makes you play these games but yourself. So you're your own nightmare. Now, you're gonna die. Go yank your through your you butt mongrel. I got the power glove. That was a weird dream. It's gonna take you back to the past to play the games that suck. 
He'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diarrhea dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer. He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. I love the power glove. It's so bad. And I mean bad. This thing is bad. Why need a glove to play a game? What's wrong with this? Huh? I don't know. I thought this was okay, playing it, you know, with the controller. So if anything, the power glove, it's an interesting experiment in gaming technology. But too bad they were just Like, why does it suck so bad? Well, I have one complaint, one complaint about this glove. It doesn't work. Now, what's the most important aspect about any game? Well, being able to play it. Now, before you can even begin to get this piece of to work, you have to put these three sensors on your TV like this. Now, if you own the power glove, you're going to need to know what the program codes are. Yes, that's right. You have to put in a different code for each game that you play. So go on the internet, get a whole bunch of codes for all the games, and whenever you're playing a game, you got to punch in the code. Super Glove Ball. Well, the game is basically you're just this glove and you're going around grabbing balls. Grab the flying fish. Grab them. Grab them. I don't get it. That's it. I can't take it anymore. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you different games on the Power Glove. To shoot, I just squeeze my fingers. Go up! Go up! Go up! I can't get the up there. It's easier to do a handstand while taking a sh How do I attack? Oh. Somehow I kicked, but I don't really know how I did it. I'm getting my kicked. Oh. Come on, get him, get him, punch him. Oh. I can't pass the first screen in Double Dragon. Just, might as well just use the controller. What's the point of this? Castlevania. Twitching my finger like this, I swing the whip. Come on. Oh yeah, there we go. How do I jump? How the f do I jump? Oh. Is that it? Squeezing? Does that jump? Can I get up the stairs? Can I get up the f stairs? How do I get up the stairs? Oh, just jump. Can I do a nice jump over this? Come on, do a jump. Yeah, there we go, we jumped. It's awesome. It's, it's really exciting when you actually get something to work. Come on, go down. There we go. No, don't go that way. Go this way. Come on. Come on, go down. Don't go up the steps. Go down the steps. Don't go up the steps. Go down. Don't go up the steps go down you f oh, how the f am I going up there again come on oh Jesus jumping all over the place I didn't even know you could jump backwards come on oh you fishman oh good luck I'm gonna fall in the water and die wow this sucks
This sucks hard. Come on, now jump, 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 jump. Oh, oh, wow, that helped. Okay, keep going. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. There's only one way to do this game with the power glove. So while it's not very responsive, I can go up and I can go down and left and right. But everything else, like the punching and kicking, just seems to come at random. the bubbles good luck sucks monkey f sucks monkey f down go down come on down down go the f down down go down left go back come on go back go left go left i can't shoot anybody over there go back go up up go oh jesus come oh can ah oh. Go! F doodle. This battle will make your blood boil. Good luck. Good luck is right. I'm using the power glove. I can't even line myself up to shoot this tank up here. Go up. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. I think I got it. Uh, I can't get around the rock. Move. Up, left, left, come on, left, left, you can go left, come on, up, left, up. <sighs> I can't even get around the trees. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go, oh yeah, we're moving on, we're moving on. Okay, oh god, no! One of the big problems is that I can't either stop jumping or stop ducking. Alright, well, do I want to really bother to talk to him? Yeah, not really. No, I don't. Come on, I really, I, I was, I'm serious. I don't want to talk to you. Go, leave the, leave the f cabin or the house or whatever the f it is. Come on, keep walking. Well, there we go. I didn't really mean to go in there. Alright, leave. Alright, leave the house. Go left. Go left. Come on, go left. Oh, you, f I'm in the house again. I don't want to get the f out of the house. Get up! Go away! Alright, left! Cool, there we go! Oh, Jesus Christ, why am I shooting the sword? Alright! There we go! We got this, man! We got this by the- You know what's really cool about Rad Racer? That if you push select... The game goes 3D. I'm playing Rad Racer with the Power Glove and 3D glasses. You can't get any more rad than that. Wow. Playing Top Gun with the Power Glove. It's like puking on a pile of shit. Oh my god, what the f am I doing? I'm trying to land the plane in Top Gun with the Power Glove? I can't even land it with the regular controller. seems to work somewhat.
Try doing the Contra code with this thing. I shoot by twitching my finger. Jump by clenching my fist. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, come on now. Oh God, get him, get him, get him, get him off! You piece of If you want to bring a totally new element of challenge to your Nintendo games, try the Power Glove, because it sure makes everything a lot harder. It's just a barely functional contraption designed to rip off little kids. It's the biggest scam since the Atari 5200 controller. The only kids who own this were usually the richer ones who thought they were cool. Well, they're not cool. I'm not cool either. Look at me. You think I'm cool? I got a glove on my hand. I'm trying to play a game with it. I look like an idiot with a fistful of Well, hey, let's end with the classic Super Mario Brothers. All right, Mario, you don't have to keep jumping. At least you made it over the Goomba. You were lucky, you f All right, what? Come on, I can't get up on the fight? I'm not even doing anything. I'm touching the floor right now. I am touching the floor, and I can't get him to stop jumping. Get over the pipe, you f Oh, I can't get over the pipe. Oh, this is... Oh, yeah! Oh, f Come back, come on. Oh, yeah! Oh, no! Go, come on! Oh, f Oh, you f Now you're playing with power. Now you're playing with f You're better off f than f with this f up f this you don't know shit about how this is. It's so bad, it sucks. It's so suck it. And I can't take it anymore. Let me take you back to when Capcom's Street Fighter 2 came out. I never heard of the first one, but hey, this is an awesome game. Can't wait for Street Fighter 3. Then comes Street Fighter 2 The Champion Edition. Oh, cool. Street Fighter 3's next, right? Nope. Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Okay, awesome. Can't wait for Street Fighter 3. Super Street Fighter 2. Um, cool. Uh, Street Fighter 3? Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. What the f***? At first I thought all these updates were kind of nice to hold you over, but how many times can you update the same game? It's getting ridiculous, I'm not gonna buy it again. Well, then finally comes Street Fighter Alpha, then Street Fighter Alpha 2, and after that, I honestly lost track. There eventually was a Street Fighter 3, like 9 million versions of it, but there was also Street Fighter Zero, Street Fighter EX, EX2, and EX2 Plus. Not to mention, way back on the NES, there was Street Fighter 2010, and I couldn't tell you where that fits in. And speaking of Capcom, Mega Man's another series where the numbering got confusing. There's Mega Man 1 through 6 on the Nintendo, but then on the Super Nintendo, there's Mega Man X, which at the time I thought it meant Mega Man 10, but then came Mega Man X2 and X3. Strangely enough, there was a Mega Man 7 on Super Nintendo after all. That's right. Two different series going on at the same time. Then on the PlayStation consoles, there was Mega Man X4, X5, X6, X7, and X8. There was even a Mega Man 8, a regular Mega Man 8, on PlayStation. Now only if they made a Mega Man 9, it would come full circle. It doesn't end there either. What's this? Mega Man Battle Network series? Mega Man 64? Did they really make it that far? No. That was just the Nintendo 64 stupid gimmick of putting 64 at the end of every title. Another thing that really grinds my shit is when the Japanese and American releases of games differ. The results can also be pretty confusing. A good example was when Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan wasn't released in America till later, but what we got in its place was a completely different version, though it was still called Super Mario Bros. 2. And the Japanese one came later as The Lost Levels. The Final Fantasy series is the prime example. Not being a hardcore fan, I'll attempt to explain it to the best of my knowledge. 
From what I understand, Final Fantasy II, at the time of its Japanese release, wasn't released in the US, neither was Final Fantasy III. But Final Fantasy IV came out here, and because we didn't have two or three, it wouldn't have made sense to call it four, so what do they do? They call it two. Now, Final Fantasy V wasn't released here either. So, when VI came out, that became three. Final Fantasy III also happens to be one of my all-time favorite games on the Super Nintendo. And I remember that after that, Squaresoft started releasing the next Final Fantasy games on PlayStation. Things changed, and now they weren't f***ing with the titles anymore. So when Final Fantasy VII came out, they just called it Final Fantasy VII. And that's where the confusion began. I wondered, what the happened to 4, 5, and 6, but what I really should have been wondering, little did I know, what the f happened to 2, 3, and 5? And once I figured that out, I was like, so there were other Final Fantasy games we didn't know about? I was playing 6 all along and not 3? What a bunch of f bull f Now let's talk about movies now, because I have a lot to say. One of the things that really brings my piss to a boil is when there's a movie that has a whole bunch of sequels, all conveniently numbered, but then they suddenly decide to stop numbering them. Take Halloween for example. Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween H2O, and Halloween Resurrection. Oh God. If they continue like this, years from now, future generations aren't going to know which order these films came in unless they do a little research first. What I want to know is why was it okay to number the first five, but not after that? Like they're embarrassed they made so many. Not to mention each one just sucks harder and harder. And if anything, the more sequels there are, the more necessary it would be to just number them. The Star Trek series did the same thing. Right now there's ten of them. Star Trek 1 through 6 were all numbered. But when they stopped using the original cast from the show and started using the cast from Star Trek The Next Generation, they dropped the numbers from the films and called them Star Trek Generations, Star Trek First Contact, Star Trek Insurrection, and Star Trek Nemesis. Okay, well that's real fine, but where'd the f numbers go? If they couldn't call Star Trek Generations Star Trek 7, then why didn't they just call it Star Trek The Next Generation off the show and then call the next one Star Trek The Next Generation 2 and just start a new line of sequels? But hey, some of the original cast was in Star Trek Generations, so instead they should have called it Star Trek 7 slash The Next Generation Part 1. Actually, never mind, just f I've always praised the Rocky movies. What a perfect string of sequel titles. Rocky, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, and Rocky 5. No subtitles, all Roman numbers, consistent, perfect. But they're gonna f it all up now by calling the new one Rocky Balboa. Seriously, are you kidding me? Rocky Balboa? Why can't it be Rocky 6? Rocky Balboa sounds like it's the first one, but just adding his last name. And what if they made another one? Would they include his middle initial? And then his date of birth? Oh, what a load of f what kind of stupid excuse for a title is this? Reveal more of the character's name. It's like making a prequel to Forrest Gump and just calling it Forrest. Now with talk of Rambo 4 coming out, what are they going to do? Call it John Rambo? And speaking of Rambo, that's a series that somehow completely changed its title. The first one was called First Blood. That's it. First Blood. The second one was called Rambo, First Blood Part 2. And then the third one was called Rambo 3. So what, they just forgot about First Blood? The correct title would be Rambo 2, First Blood Part 3. The Alien series is also pretty f***ed up. They start with Alien, then Aliens, which makes sense. First there was one alien, and now there's many. The title's consistent with the plot, and it works. But then, uh-oh, they make a third one. Oh gee, what are we going to call it? can't be Aliens's. That won't work. Besides, there's only one alien again, so let's just call it Alien 3. That works. There's not really much else they could have called it. But now you'd think it's time to start numbering the sequels from now on. You think? Or would that just be too traditional? Well, the next one's called Alien Resurrection. At first, I thought it was a joke. Apart from resurrection being one of the most overused words to be found in a sequel, there's no reason not to use the number four. I mean, you numbered the last movie. Why can't you number this one? So what do you want to do? Do you want to number them or use cliche words? I don't care which, but make up your 
minds. You don't start numbering sequels and then go back to not numbering them. And there's more than one alien again. So why isn't the title plural like in Aliens? What were they thinking? The title of Bruce Lee's first major film was called The Big Boss. But when they released it in the U.S., the American distributors, or whoever was responsible, decided to change the title to Fists of Fury. Well, okay, well that's just fine, but the next one happened to be called Fist of Fury. So, uh-oh, we f***ed up. What are we going to call it here in the U.S.? We can't call it Fist of Fury because we changed the last one to Fists of Fury. Call it the Chinese Connection. And from now on, just call the movies whatever the f*** they're originally called. Jackie Chan made a movie called Armor of God, and the sequel was called Armor of God 2, Operation Condor. Well, when that came out in the U.S., there was a little difficulty. Armor of God wasn't out yet, so they decided to release the sequel here first and change the title to just Operation Condor. Well, after that, Armor of God actually did make an American release, and it was called Operation Condor 2, Armor of God, a complete reversal. Now let's talk about the zombie series. If you live in America and you're trying to follow these movies, you'll find zombie one through six, but there's no zombie two. What the f A movie series with a missing sequel? Well, here's the explanation. It started off with George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Yes, that's right, the sequel to Night of the Living Dead. The European release of Dawn of the Dead was recut and the title was changed to Zombie. Then there was an Italian-made sequel called Zombie 2. Yes, that's right, a sequel to a sequel which spawned another line of sequels. Jeez. Well, when Zombie 2 came out in America, they couldn't call it Zombie 2 because there was no zombie. Calling it Dawn of the Dead 2 would have been wrong because it has nothing to do with Mr. Romero's original version, so they just called it Zombie instead. Yes, Zombie 2 is now Zombie. Not to be confused with the Italian version of the Dawn of the Dead, which is also called Zombie. So, when Zombie 3 came out in America, they figured, okay, f*** it, it's only going to keep getting more confusing, so just f call it Zombie 3 like it is. But there's no Zombie 2. F*** it, don't change the titles anymore. Now, the UK, caught in between this mess, just decided to leave the title of Dawn of the Dead alone and change Zombie 2 to Zombie Flesh Eaters. Then Zombie 3 would be Zombie Flesh Eaters 2, and so on, and so on. Speaking of movie series with missing titles, whatever happened to the Naked Gun movies? First off, why is the sequel called Naked Gun 2 and a half? What's half about it? After all, I assume they incorporated half the script from the third movie into it, and therefore includes half the next movie. I guess that makes sense, except for the fact that I never saw Naked Gun 3. Or 4 or five, or any of them up till Naked Gun 33 and a third. I mean, how the f*** did I miss that many sequels? I couldn't even find them anywhere. They aren't even listed in Leslie Nielsen's filmography, so I guess he wasn't in those. Somebody help me, I can't find them anywhere. Where's the other half of Naked Gun 3 and all the others up to 32? I can't f find them. Where are they? I think it's pretty impressive if they're all numbered, and that's gotta be a record for amount of sequels to a comedy, but that one just blows my mind. Well, I gotta calm down now, so that's enough of my gripes. Thanks for listening to my rants, and good night. Twice the mega power? What's mega power, and how could you have twice as much of it? The title screen shows a nice colorful display for 8-bit graphics, though I would have preferred a traditional black and white side-scrolling title like in the movies. But more importantly, listen to the music. Does it sound anything like the Rocky theme? Or any of the music from the movies at all? Well, the graphics are great for the time, but I wonder why Rocky's training in shorts. Not to mention why Apollo's shorts. That didn't happen till the third movie. But anyway, this is the training stage, and you just keep tapping the buttons. I really don't know if there's any technique, but you just keep tapping the buttons. Well, this is boring, don't you think?
cock a doodle sucking ball. This is boring. Okay, here we go. We're fighting Apollo. Graphics look great. They're in the proper color shorts, the ring, the audience, everything looks good. For 8-bit, of course. But I can't say the same for the gameplay. All you do is tap buttons. There's a few different kinds of punches you can execute, like a hook, a straight punch, or an uppercut. And I have the manual which tells me, keeping your distance, hitting up and two does a straight punch, down and two does a hook. And standing close, uh, the, the two button alone, or up and two, does an uppercut. Now, I find that none of that works, so I just tap buttons. Primarily the two button, the other one blocks. And besides the mere simplicity of it, it's just unpredictable as to when you're gonna hit or get hit. The control just sucks balls. The worst thing about it is how you move. Unlike traditional control where if you push left you go left and if you push right you go right, Rocky just weaves back and forth on his own. It doesn't make any sense at all. To move your player about the ring does not really require any specific buttons for execution. It requires the right situation because your player will be prohibited from moving unless you satisfy these conditions. If you're on the offense and attacking freely, your player will move according to the direction of your blows and can be guided to the left, right, or forward, backward with your D button. If you're on the defense, your player will not move in the direction you want until you can guard yourself effectively with the button 1, and then you must start dealing blows to be in control of your footwork as mentioned above. So did you get that? Well, let me sum it up. It's a bunch of putrid coming out of a rhinoceros It up the ass at the mouth, piss at the nose, dookie at the ear, diarrhea at the It's for the birds. The control in this game is poo-poo. All right, I knock Apollo down. He starts humping the floor. And he gets back up. And he's as easy as crap, as long as you just keep tapping the button. Knock him down, he humps the floor, he gets back up. The repetitive nature of this game is astounding. How many times can he get back up? It's embarrassing. There's no three knockdown rule in effect, no Mario to come in and say TKO. Even though I think a technical knockout can occur in this game, it takes forever to happen. So it just goes on and on and on. Eventually he'll stay down and you win. Then you get another training stage. Just wonderful. Is there any point to this? Like, I know it's supposed to make me stronger during the fight, but f it, I don't feel like tapping the buttons. It's only gonna make my fingers more tired and then I'll end up losing the fight anyway. I'd rather just wait instead. Well, there's no rematch with Apollo like in the movie, so you just go straight to Clubber Lang. Wait, what's this? He's kicking my ass. He's punching my face, whatever. Unlike Apollo, Clubber Lang will just rip your inside out. He's a tough son of a Get up. Get up, you floor head. Stop pumping the floor. How does a game go from being so easy to being so hard? Let's try again. This time, no around. Gotta do good on those training stages. Gotta get strong. I just gotta keep tapping those buttons till I break my thumb. I'd rather take a bath in elephant feces. I'd rather eat raw eggs.
He's playing some games, the worst he recalls He's gonna find out which one sucked the most balls The angry video game nerd is here Oh, he's making a list and checking it twice He's gonna go home and eat chicken and rice The angry video game nerd is here he hates the games that stink He knows which games to break He just might even hate them all Cause he's mad for f sake You better watch out, don't give these games a try You better not play him, he's telling you why The angry video game nerd is here I'm here to talk about a series of games based on stories from the Bible, all with weird deformed cartridges made for Nintendo systems but without any endorsement from Nintendo. Like take this one for example, Bible Adventures. Would you want to buy this with its weird baby blue cartridge? It's made by a Christian gaming company that makes unauthorized Nintendo games? Let's check it out. All right, three games in one. You got Noah's Ark, Baby Moses, and David and Goliath. First, let's do Noah's Ark. Well, there's Noah. He moves pretty fast for an old guy. The object's to get the animals in the ark. Holy sh you just pick them up? Is that how Noah did it? He did it all by himself by picking the animals up and carrying them into the ark? Well, according to Bible Adventures, that's how it happened. So there's where you drop those off. You just bring them to the door, you let those run in there. You get a checklist of all the animals you need, so it's pretty simple. Go find some more, bring them back. Fun, huh? I just can't get over that. He's an old man, and not only does he pick the animals up, he lifts them over his head. It doesn't even slow him down. How can such an old man be so strong? Have you ever tried to lift a horse? Not that easy. What the shit? Let alone a horse and an ox? Or a horse, a cow, and two oxen? What the f***? Noah's so strong, he puts the Hulk to shame. And the poor creatures, they're so scared they don't even try to get away. Noah, man. Nobody with him. Not even Chuck Norris. The only animals that have the balls to fight back are the pigs. Stop it! Pig? I'm only trying to take you in the ark. There's gonna be a flood. What, do you want to die? Alright, that's it. You're gonna get it. So, what do you do? You grab that whatever it is and you knock that out. Uh, take that! Now I gotcha. You're going in the ark, you nut. I hate those pigs, but I also hate the oxen. You drop them every time you jump, so you gotta keep picking them back up again. The monkeys are also pretty annoying. Sometimes you gotta chase them all around. What a sight. Look, an old man climbing up a tree chasing monkeys. It's quite ridiculous. You f monkey, get back here! Now you're gonna get it. Urgh, take that, you monkey f You're going in the ark. Another thing really amazing about Noah is that he can run so fast, he can actually outrun the screen. Which is really annoying because you can't see where you're going, so you have to stop just to let the screen catch up. Another sign of a badly designed game. Now it looks like we got all the animals, except the snakes. Now that's got to be tricky, right? Grabbing them's out of the question. So let's pick up that thing and try to knock them out. Well, I can knock them out, but if I don't catch them, they're gone. I can't catch them either. How do you get those snakes? Well, guess what? I'm trying to get the wrong snakes. But how can you blame me? They're the first snakes you see in the game. Well, check this out. I go in this cave, and this is real frustrating because to climb the walls, you have to jump and hit the A button at the perfect timing. Then once you get to the top, there you go. There's your snakes. So these are the real snakes you're supposed to get, not the ones in the trees. They're only decoys. Challenge is one thing, but why does this game have to f trick me? So, don't get the snakes that you first see when you're walking around. Go take a wild guess. Climb through the cave until you find the real ones. F this game. 
Now you thought that was bad? A game where you collect a bunch of objects to bring back to the middle of the board? How could it get any worse? Just watch. Our next game is Baby Moses. Alright, well, the object of the game is to get to the end of the level carrying Baby Moses. Now, this is really annoying because while carrying him, there's no way to defend yourself from everything that's out to kill you, and I do mean everything. If the soldiers catch Baby Moses, they throw him in the water. What And what's with this theme of carrying things? It's actually kind of a rip-off of Super Mario Bros. 2. Even the graphics kind of remind me of it. Except for those chocolate cats. Speaking of carrying things, look how many things she can stack. What kind of picture is this? Moses' mom carrying baby Moses, carrying a block of cheese, carrying a guy carrying a spear? I never thought I'd see that. Beware the black spaces. If you jump through them, you fall in the water and die. Whoa. Either that or I guess it shoots baby Moses up in the sky. What's going on? This game sucks. God, this is annoying. The only way to have any fun at all is to throw baby Moses in the water and then go explore the level without him. This is a weird game. What other game could you ever say, I just threw baby Moses in the water? For some reason, I can't stop saying baby Moses. Baby Moses, baby Moses. When you finish the level, it says good work, but you forgot <laughs> baby Moses. I didn't forget him, I just didn't want him. Well, there's only one game left. David and Goliath. Well, you're going around carrying sheep. Yeah, are you surprised? The object is to bring four sheep to this blinking arrow to advance to the next level. The originality just stuns me. And you know what? All three games use the same music. You'd rather listen to your only infant child puking to death. That is, choking on his own puke chunks. That's disgusting. I apologize. Those sheep are a b to carry, especially if you're trying to get past the lion. That lion hates sheep and anybody who carries sheep. However, if you go past them without the sheep, they don't give a sh I can even pick the lion up and it doesn't care. Sure, try that in real life. Pick up a lion and see what happens. And while you're at it, just try to punch that lion in the nuts. Yeah, right in the nuts. You can even use an acorn to knock the lion out. I wouldn't want to get hit by one of those acorns. Those lions are wusses. What? What happened? Did you see that? That lion just fell flat on his and he fell at the same time as this squirrel. So who knocked them both out? Well, let's take a look at the whole replay and see what happened. Here we see this squirrel throws an acorn. It clobbers the lion. Bam! Now, let's back up a bit. Just before he gets hit, this other squirrel throws an acorn, which comes right back down, and BAM! He knocked himself out with his own acorn. Dumb <laughs> Anyway, let's go get some sheep. I like the sheep sound effects. <laughs> Come on, you sheep. I'm not gonna hurt you. Sheepy, sheepy. Sheepy, sheepy, sheepy! This. I feel like a stupid going after all these sheep for no reason. The most fun I have in this game is watching that weird squirrel. I'm telling you, that squirrel does some weird One minute it's sleeping, then it's running up and over the tree, and oh my god, look at that! It's a flying squirrel! Or it's like climbing the sky. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is! Wow, they were on drugs when they made this game. Later in the game, you get a weapon, some kind of fireball or something, I don't know, but it sucks. It's just like the rock in Friday the 13th. It arcs over everybody you try to hit. What good is a weapon that doesn't go straight? Like, it deliberately dodges your target. What a piece of Now, I know I'm sucking pretty bad at this, but unless you've played it, you have no idea how friggin' awful the controls are. It just feels slippery. And you feel like you have to force everything you're doing. But that only makes it more likely to overshoot a jump or undershoot it trying not to. Doesn't help either that there's all these rocks coming down. 
And finally, when I get up here, it's not even worth it because there's nowhere to go. I can't even go in those caves. So that's enough of this shit. Well, that's Bible Adventures. You thought that was weird? Well, wait till you see Bible Buffet. Yeah, Bible Buffet. When I first heard the title, I just didn't get it. My only guess is it has to do with food and the Bible. Well, guess what? I got half of that right. It definitely has to do with food, but there's no mention of anything from the Bible anywhere in this whole game. What is this I'm looking at? It's a board game? In fact, it's a rip off of Candyland. Just look at it. All the different food themed lands like Potato Land, Barbecue Land, Pizza Land, Dessert Land. Player one. Oh my God, it's talking. Well, you spin the wheel and you make some moves just like any board game. Then you get to play all these weird mini games which sort of resemble an Atari game. The sound effects are classic. <laughs> And it definitely resembles Attack of the Killer Tomatoes more than it does the Bible. So you lay down all these exploding pancakes which blow up everything. I think they're supposed to be oil drums or something, but everything else is some kind of food. So I'm just going to call them exploding pancakes. I mean, this is just weird. It might as well be anything. I mean, look at all this stuff that's trying to kill me. Potato chips and pizzas and pork chops and bottles, watermelons, ice cream cones, ice cubes, and cans of, like, soda coming out of a vending machine? Look, a snowman. Watch this. I'm gonna blow his head off. Yeah, that snowman's dead as <sighs> I just pushed that thing into the exit, but there's no way to get it back out. So, now I blocked myself from finishing the level, and my only choices now are to reset the game, or commit suicide. Every once in a while, you get a little quiz. True or false? Um, I guess true. Um, true or false? I guess false. What the hell am I guessing? It would help if I had the questions. You know where they are? They're in the manual. So, unless you still have the manual, let alone have the game, you're not going to know what the questions are. Now, what was the problem with putting the questions on the screen? Why didn't they do that instead? What were they thinking? All right. That voice is just crazy. I, I don't know what it is, but it just sounds out of place. Player not that one. anything is in place, but I don't know. It's so rare to hear such a clear voice in a Nintendo game. But I suppose it's also rare for Nintendo to have a Bible game with no references to the Bible resembling Atari that's all about food trying to kill you, yet it's also a board game ripoff with quizzes that you can't answer. And if it's a Bible game, why do you blow a snowman's head off? Whatever happened to thou shall not kill? Please, somebody tell me, what the hell am I playing? I kind of like it, but I got to turn it off before I go insane. So let's play another Bible game. It's the Book of Genesis on Sega Genesis, and the soundtrack is Genesis. I'm just making this up, but let's move on to Super Nintendo and check out this game that I'm actually not making up. I couldn't even come up with anything half as crazy if I tried. This is Super Noah's Ark 3D, yet it's also referred to as Super 3D Noah's Ark because of the way the title art's misrepresented. So, who knows? Call it whatever you want. Call it Super 3D f farts if you want. I know it's weird, but the weirdness actually starts with the cartridge. As you can see, it looks like no other Super Nintendo game you've ever seen. In fact, it doesn't even look like a game at all. It looks more like a game genie. By this time, I believe Nintendo was catching on to the fact that Wisdom Tree was making these Bible games for their system without their permission. So what I think happened was, when Super Nintendo came out, they put a new lockout chip inside the system, which only allows games licensed by Nintendo to work. So, how many Super Nintendo games came out not licensed by Nintendo? Well, just one, and it found a way. By plugging an official Super Nintendo game into the top of it, it overrides the lockout chip and you can play it. The question is, would you want to? Well, actually, yeah, you would. What other first person shooter game do you get to play as Noah? I really can't believe this game exists, but it seems to be a fact because I'm playing it. Now, does it look like Wolfenstein 3D? Yes, in fact, it is Wolfenstein 3D. 
it doesn't even count as a ripoff. It's the same game, but with Noah, instead of shooting Nazis, he's shooting goats. All the levels are exact duplicates, but what's really funny to know is that there's a story going around that id, the company that made Wolfenstein and Doom, they gave their own game to Wisdom Tree for them to turn into this. Why? Well, according to the rumor, id was pissed off that the Super Nintendo version of Wolfenstein was inferior to the PC version, and that Nintendo basically butchered it by toning down the violence, as well as altering numerous other things. So, as some sort of joke or whatever, id handed the source code over to Wisdom Tree for them to make the mockery which you're looking at now. And there's a bit of a conspiracy going on. According to the Bible, Noah puts two of each animal in the ark, right? Well, according to this game, he put a whole bunch of goats on there. And if that's not crazy enough, guess what? All those goats want Noah dead. Why is there so many of them? And why do you shoot them with a slingshot? I think that would actually make them more angry. I can't even see what you're supposed to be shooting at them anyway. It just looks invisible. It's supposed to be food, I guess, but why does it put the animals to sleep? Well, I guess Noah shoots the food so hard that it knocks the animals unconscious. Now, what's even stranger is how they attack you. They just do like these weird kicks from a mile away and they hit you. Like, how do they even reach? Listen to how cheerful the music is. Wow, that's great. It's just what you need is some really upbeat music to go along with Noah getting murdered by a bunch of goats. So, that's it. There's more animals along the way, but you get the idea. So, as we've seen, every one of these Bible games rips off something. So just to show you another example, let's take a look at Spiritual Warfare on the Nintendo. Okay, right off the bat, what does this game look like? Hmm. Well, here's some hints. Look, it's an aerial view with like bushes and rocks. You start off with three hearts for health. You hold two items. You go into a little cave and you talk to someone. And when you walk to the next area, the screen moves. There's that square shaped stairwell. And there's a raft. You go down ladders with gray stone walls. And when you start the game, you get to type in a name. Well, if you can't already tell what this game looks like, let me spell it out. That's right. Zelda. Let's recap, shall we? In Zelda, we have an aerial view with bushes and rocks. You start off with three hearts for the health. You hold two items. You go into a little cave and you talk to someone. And when you walk to the next area, the screen moves. There's that square-shaped stairwell. You go down the ladders with the gray stone walls. There's your raft. And when you start the game, you type in a name. What a shameless ripoff. Well, at least they came up with a few original ideas, like sometimes when you kill your enemies, a flying devil comes out. And besides just the usual rocks and bushes or trees or whatever, they randomly have all these garbage cans placed about. That's where this game belongs, the f garbage. All right, let's play one more game. King of Kings. Oh, great, three more games. Let's do wise men. Well, you're on a camel. You're basically just trying to ride to the end of the level. Your obstacles include lizards, a cactus that comes up out of the ground, flying rocks, porcupine shooting needles, moving pitfalls, and blocks that come down and stun you. Just like in Bible adventures, the control is really awkward. But here, it's so bad, it's nearly unplayable. So, every once in a while, you pick up these scrolls that make you answer questions about the Bible. Like, who is Jesus' mother? Well, that would be Mary. Now, why are there quizzes in the middle of this game? Quizzes aren't fun. Quizzes make you feel like you're in school. Games are fun. Quizzes, not fun. Put them together. So, you'd probably rather just play the game than answer the questions, which would be a good reason to just avoid the scrolls. But if you get the questions right, you get energy, which you want. Now, a lot of these questions are true or false. And once you get used to that, you tend to not look at the words true and false because you instinctively assume true always comes above false. But no, not with this game. They alternate just to trick you. Many times I accidentally pick false when I mean to pick true. I mean, what's up with that Just keep them the same. Now let's try flight to Egypt. 
bad. All right, Jesus in the temple, last game. Let's get it over with. Okay, another ripoff of Super Mario Brothers 2, where you're jumping on logs to get across the waterfall. Well, at least they upped the challenge on those logs, but it's just flat out annoying. The logs have the most erratic pattern. Sometimes you jump too early thinking that the next log is going to come, but it doesn't. Then, just to tease you, it pops up at the bottom, crawling up the waterfall just to sit there and mock you. Other times, the second log shows up, but once you're on it and expecting the third one, it doesn't come. But just for one final kick in the balls, it throws all these other logs down to make you think that you can salvage it and jump your way back to safety to try again. But no, not quite. The graphics are really flawed. I mean, usually you know to time your jumps once you see that log coming up over the waterfall, but sometimes they just appear at random, which doesn't give you enough time to react. Also, what's going on with those colors in the sky? Looks like something you might see if you take too much LSD. There's really nothing else worth mentioning with this game. It just sucks, and I can't even stand to play it anymore. I'd rather f a porcupine and shove a cactus up my I'd rather slurp crap oozing out of a warthog's anus hole. It's just a bunch of poopy diarrhea doo-doo That's it. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Birthday Jesus, whatever. Happy Holidays. See ya in 2007.